Blog Talk Radio. This is the Wealthy Wednesday Radio Show with Lucy McMonagall, helping you create a lifestyle and business that you love. Lucy is an intuitive success coach who specializes in assisting and training for lifestyle and business success. As a member of your own university and an associate member of the Women's Speakers Association, she brings over 20 years of serial entrepreneurship, internet business training, and financial training to the table. Lucy is on a mission to empower and inspire holistic entrepreneurs to become wealthier. Let's begin that journey together as we welcome the host of the Wealthy Wednesday Radio Show, Lucy McMonagall. Hello and welcome to Wealthy Wednesday Radio Show. This is your host, Lucy McMonagall, and I am so grateful that you're spending a few minutes with us this afternoon, actually a total of 60 minutes. I have a phenomenal special guest today that I would really like to... um, Welcome to the show in just a few minutes. But first, if you are next to your computer, I would love it if you would like our Facebook page at facebook.com backslash Wealthy Wednesday Radio. That's our Facebook page. Now, today our special guest is Kathleen, Kathleen Morgan. Her main topics of expertise are productivity, career transition, and small business. Catherine is a business consultant to, consult, consultant to consultants and a career transition coach through her company Point A to Point B Transitions. She works with professionals out of the financial services, professional services, and technology industries. She helps them with career, business, or life transitions. She has been working with professionals in transition full-time for five years and on the side for 20 years. Catherine is a also a professional speaker who talks frequently on career transition, small business success strategies, and productivity. Catherine is appropriately irrelevant, irrelevant and is not afraid to poke fun at herself in the issues we all face. So please check out her website at www.a to point B transitions dot com. Catherine, are you with us today? I sure am, and I'm hoping that I'm irreverent, not irrelevant. Irreverent, yes. <laughs> I am so <laughs> grateful you put me on that. <laughs> so thank you for if, I, if I'm irrelevant, we've missed our too. point. <laughs> yes. That is a good point. Excellent point. So and um, I appreciate you you helping me. I am so excited for you being on the show today, and and I am really honored. Um, I would like to um, ask you just a few questions just to get the ball rolling. But first, I wanted to know: Is there anything you'd like to talk to the listeners today before we start? No, I'm happy to answer any questions you have, and I. I, I hope that they enjoy the show. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So I, you know, being that you work with people in transitions in, in some capacity, what is the biggest struggle for people in career or business transitions? Yes, um, that is a very good question. Um, people, there's a saying where you can't see the label from inside your own jar. So Mm -hmm. the biggest problem with somebody looking to make a transition is they they don't really see themselves clearly. So they may have issues around clarity of of where they're looking to go. They may have issues around focus on how they should spend their time. And they definitely may have issues around what their possibilities are. Because once again, you know, when we're inside our jar – we don't necessarily see the broader options. That is so true. From personal experience, I can definitely say when I was in transition, that's exactly where I was at. I couldn't see outside of my jar. Um, So how how can professionals figure out what their next step is when they they are stuck in that jar and, and what do they need to do? 
Well, the first thing they need to do, I jokingly call the you are here exercise. You know, when you're walking through a shopping mall or a museum, there's the big map and there's the little sticker that says you are here. Mm -hmm. So you need to say, okay, this is the snapshot of my current situation. And it's going to have a bunch of components. You know, where are my finances? What are my best skills? What do I like to do? What am I good at that I kind of hate? (laughs) What am I actually bad at? Um, What are my upcoming obligations financially? What's my relationship situation? You just need to be what I call brutally honest with yourself, you know, Nothing's either good or bad. It just is, and and you are here. So that's the first step uh, people need because you don't know what your options are until you figure out where you're starting from. Does that make sense? Oh, that makes perfect sense. That makes real perfect sense. And do you suggest that people write these questions down that you just mentioned and then work on them or – you have do they do you have a certain type of a process to to help them get to you are here i do i do um, i don't know if uh you know you've ever gone it sounds like you've gone through some coach training and or been through with coaching but there's what people call that wheel of life and I didn't mm-hmm. make this up, but it breaks out um you know your life when somebody's in transition, a lot of times they can really be too strongly focused on just the financial. And that doesn't serve them because other aspects of your life might be actually better. If you uh, are in career transition, if you were laid off or you felt you had to quit, you know, you may have, you know, all the all the stress around the um the issues of of your money, but there are other aspects of your life that actually may have gotten much better as a result of you not going to work. Let me give you some examples. I have had uh, people come into my practice where they were consultants and they were what you call road warriors. They were on the road four days a week or they were working crazy hours and they've been running around with their hair on fire for 20 years and all of a sudden, for whatever reason, they're in transition, and actually, they're not that unhappy about it. Certain aspects of their life have gotten much better. Their relationship with their spouse or partner may have gotten better. Their relationship with their kids may have gotten better. They may now be able to be taking care of themselves or exercising or doing a bunch of things that have been on their to-do list forever. Wow, yeah, that's a really that's a good point. Excellent, excellent. I I definitely know that, you know, for my transitions areas did get improved and then other areas they they were they were areas I needed to look at and being brutally honest with myself was was one of the main things to do. Um this is so incredibly helpful for so many people. Thank you. Um yeah. You know what might be helpful? Um, You asked me if I had a process for, you know, walking people through it. I think it might be useful to talk about my PALMS framework, which is, it stands for Perspective, Action, Limiting Beliefs, Manifesting, and Supporting. And that's the stages I take somebody through when they come into my practice, either for a career transition or for a business transition. Do you think that would be helpful? Oh, that would be fabulous. I'm sure that would help a lot of individuals. And plus it would be very, very helpful for for people in the future who listen to the radio show. So please explain how this process works. Well, you're going to know from your personal transitions or any business transitions you've been through, you, me, everybody else out there, um, the first thing you need to gain is perspective. And we we just touched on that, 
you know, about the you are here exercise and the wheel of life and, and where the different pieces of your life are. And they may be better or worse than you initially thought they were. So that's the first stage, perspective. Um, what, what do we have to work with? You know, if you are having money issues, you need to concentrate on what's going to bring some money in quickly. That's fine. You know, if you have a longer term to think about, you know, what your legacy work or what, how you can find work that ties into your values, that's fine too. But you got to know where you are. So that's the first stage, Pete, perspective. So the second one is action. Now, I find that I, and I can't speak for you, but a lot of my clients too, get stuck, you know, uh, they're spinning. They don't know what to do. And there's a, a bunch of ways they could go and they're confused. And then they just get overwhelmed and they're like, I don't know. So what I try to do is we identify some easy things that they can do to map their way forward or some easy ways to get rid of some obstacles that they may be facing. In the consulting world, we tend to call that the low-hanging fruit. So we, we do things that we can do fairly easily, and that sets a different tone with the energy. Now you're in motion, you're in action, you're accomplishing something, so you're building your foundation, and you're also building your energy for forward momentum. So the, the second stage is action, and it's not something big. Or if we're heading towards something really big, it's some little step to get to something bigger. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. That makes perfect sense. Okay. So we've gotten into action. We've done a couple things. We feel like we're moving forward. And this is where the magic starts to happen because even people who were in a bad headspace because of a brutal layoff or, or, or a divorce or health issue or something, they're, they're, they feel like maybe they can make a difference. Maybe they have some control over their uh, situation, and, and that's empowering. So the next thing we, we look at is limiting beliefs. So, you know, sometimes we're our own worst enemy and the negative voices in our head are the biggest things that hold us back. And they may or actually may not even be real. Like the, the problems may be all in our head or they may be real problems. But either way, we need to look at these limiting beliefs. What's holding us back? Is it, you know, lack of focus or our belief that because we have no money, we can't make anything happen? You know, what is it? So we... we dig them out and we take a look at them. And, and often when these limiting beliefs are brought out into the air, they are less scary or you can find a solution to them or they're not um, as overwhelming as they initially were for people. So we identify them and then we identify ways to either work with them or work through them. So that's limiting beliefs. Okay. And then... So the combination of the taking the action and then the addressing the limiting beliefs allows you to make just a quantum leap forward and we go into the manifesting stage. And it, it's just you've, you've developed the right mindset, you've developed some good habits of taking action and doing things. Maybe you've started to get some good results. And then the good energy just sort of feeds on itself, and you get this this little burst. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but the, the, there is something called the coaching effect, and it works pretty consistently. When you invest in yourself, you're able to make things happen. I don't know why. It just really does work pretty predictably and pretty much for everybody. So you go into this manifesting stage. But then... Yeah, you're manifesting things and some other issues come up. They're like, oh my gosh, my biz I just landed these two big projects and I'm a solopreneur. How the heck do I get both of these done at the same time? Do I need to hire somebody in? Do I need to work with another freelancer? Or, you know, 
how do I do my time management? Or, oh, my goodness, I just got the flu. And, you know, well, how do I manage that? I have this big deliverable. You know, there are things to do. So there's actions that have to be taken as a result of this manifesting, but it's good. This is one of those adrenaline periods, and, and everybody's pretty fired up. Yes. So um, perspective, action, limiting beliefs, manifesting, supporting. Uh, S is supporting. And this I like to think of a psych- as a cycle because you're manifesting, you're getting some support, which is, you know, strategy tweaks, accountability, um, you know, changes, positive feedback, things you could change. And it sort of goes in a circle. So the manifesting supporting is, is a circle. And, and that framework, as you can see, it's a structure, but it's also very, very flexible. So whether you're a small business owner or whether you're somebody in career transition, it's going to give you the action steps that you need to take to get forward motion. Wow. Well, so if I understood you correctly, you you use a system. It's called Palms. P is perception. A is action. Perspective. A is action. P is perspective. Yep. P is perspective. A is for action. And then L is for limiting beliefs. Right. M is for manifestation, and S is for support. And so yep. when you – and I can see this actually going into a circular motion, and so and the cycle would actually start again when you're done. And when you mention that when they're in the manifesting mode, sometimes they get the flu or they get – you know, because they had this big burst of, of good things coming to them um, – some people have specified that that's called an upper limit belief system. Do you work with any of that, or is that just a part of the manifestation stages? Yeah, I think that's why it goes in a circle, right? Because as you're, as you're changing and growing or creating, different things will be easier or harder. So then the supporting is, do we need a strategy change? Do, does, do we need to ramp this up or scale this down or add this in? Or um, do you know what you have to do and you're just not getting it done, so we need to add in some extra accountability? What do we need to do? Excellent, excellent. And you mentioned that um, there are some techniques that you recommend to help professionals to stay out of the overwhelm. Could you reiterate those for us a little bit more? <laughs> I absolutely could. Um, overwhelm is something that everybody I've ever spoken to has uh, struggled with from time to time, sometimes more, sometimes less. Entrepreneurs are particularly prone to this, but I don't think our colleagues in corporate are having any easier time. I'd like to um, read a quote from my mentor, Michael Port, about overwhelm. I was uh, sitting on one of his webinars one time, and he just sort of threw this out there as a throwaway, and I literally fell off my chair when he said it because it solidified everything I'd ever thought about overwhelm in one sentence. So here we go. Overwhelm is caused by not knowing what to do, not by having too much to do. Let me, let me read it one more time. Overwhelm is caused by not knowing what to do, not by having too much to do. That is perfect. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> I, and that, right. That is, you're right. It nails it right on the head. It does. Let me let me tell you what it did for me because I'm thinking you're like wow. So so why why is that you know the definition? Because it isn't how much we have. Have you ever ever had those situations where you're in motion, you're in action, you have a ton to do, but you're going through it like you know it's a choreographed dance routine and you're just making everything happen and you get to the end of your day and you're like, wow, I totally rocked it today. I got so much done. Well, it wasn't that you didn't have a little, you had a little bit to do. You had a lot to do, but it was, you knew what it was and you attacked it methodically and you went at it with right energy and you didn't go into overwhelm. Um, there's that 
you know, famous saying, if you need something done, give it to a busy person. But that's not inaccurate. You know, when we have a lot of time to do something, that's actually fatal. Because yes. if you have four hours, if you're in job search and you have four hours to send out, you know, three letters to recruiters or something, you know, at four o'clock, what's the what's the odds that you did it? None. You know, you were doing laundry, you were surfing YouTube, you were you know, you were doing something else. If you give things too much time, uh, work expands to the amount of time you allot. Exactly, exactly. And I, I actually call that the, the law of focus, where I, I just zero in on exactly what my tasks are, and I, I, I click them off on a methodical level. You know, I just go one after one, one you know, then it rolls into the other, and it rolls into the other. But but when, when I have a long time span, like, oh, I can get that done in a day or two days or a week or, or two weeks, that it kills me when I have two weeks to get something done because, you know, I, it just kind of it, it get, gets put on the back shelf, like you said. So that that's such a perfect example. That's yeah, then 48 hours example. before it's due, you get started, and you're like, why did I do this to myself? Exactly, exactly. Yes, yes. I um, I I I know exactly what you're talking about. So what you have four ways that professionals can prioritize their to-do lists. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm almost hot. This is really a good time to talk about how to prioritize your to-do lists right now. Could you share what you feel is the best way with your, our listeners? Um, I, I can, but I think we need to go to commercial break. All right. Then I will we'll sit on that for a second, and we'll take our commercial break. Thank you so kindly. From the best-selling author of From Bondage to Happiness, Antika Lisha will personally walk you through her new program featuring her radical forgiveness, Freedom Formula. This is for you if you are ready to once and for all be released from the chains of past abuse and take your power back. Radical Forgiveness is a five-week step-by-step system to release the chains of a traumatic past trapping in fear, reactivity, and stress and gently free you, allowing you to take your power back and claim your beautiful life. Get instant access to your first video and a free 60-minute discovery session with Antika herself, a $250 value at AntikaLibby.com slash Radical Forgiveness. I fell out of control. I hated the fact that when my husband would kiss me, my body would shudder. I'd feel so guilty and wanted to run away. I knew it wasn't my husband's fault or even my own, but the pain of my childhood abuse was still controlling my life. Until I found Antica and the Divine in Nine program. Now, I am free. The flashbacks are gone. They have vanished. My marriage is so much more fun, and I know the brighter side of life. I never thought I could feel this good about being me. If you are a woman like me who survived abuse and you're ready to stop fighting and start living, don't wait any longer. Register right now at www.divinein9.com. Be you to the fullest. That's beautiful. And it is the secret to living your life on purpose. But so many people suffer not knowing who they are and what they are here for because of the ongoing influences shooting all over us. Are you ready to break free, take back your power, and discover exactly what makes you, you? Your own university is the number one online self-awareness community here to help you confidently know yourself and step into your ideal life. Our directory is full of highly qualified personal coaches that have helped over 100,000 women from all over the world transform their lives inside and out. Come fall in love with yourself and discover true fulfillment at yourownuniversity.com. Welcome back to the Wealthy Wednesday Radio Show. This is your host, Lucy McMonagle. I am so grateful you're still with us. Today we have a phenomenal guest. Her name is Catherine Morgan, and she is a business consultant to consultants 
and a career transition coach through her company Point A to Point B Transitions. Earlier we were talking about the how to prioritize your to-do list for busy professionals, and she was just about ready to show us or give us the information. Catherine, could you talk to us about the four ways for professionals to prioritize their to-do list? Absolutely. It would be my pleasure. I have a lot of fun with this, and I like to give people sort of a mnemonic that they can remember it with. Mm-hmm. There, the four, there are four ways. The first way is cha-ching, and ah, I think you can ching. guess. <laughs> cha-ching, Wealthy Wednesday, right? So we're, this yeah. time we're talking about money, though. So what is the fast path to the cash? And sometimes the most obvious way to prioritize your to-do list, uh, especially for entrepreneurs, we forget this because we get excited about the shiny object, we get excited about the new thing, we get excited about learning something, a new info product, trying something, a new client, and we forget, you know, some of the follow-up stuff that we should be doing. Oh, a lot of people hate writing proposals. I uh, I help them do that, by the way. But um, when you have a proposal due, you might want to do the fun thing, right, instead of the proposal, which might be, wait for it, the fast path to the cash. So oh, I want love that. Ching. <laughs> but we forget as ching. entrepreneurs, the fast path that to you? the cash, absolutely, because path and cash rhyme, so that's how you can, it's easy to remember. So cha-ching yeah. is the first way you can prioritize. The second way you can prioritize is what I call gulp. And there's a, a great quote from Mark Twain that is, eat a live frog first thing in the morning, and nothing worse will happen to you for the rest of the day. Uh, that's so true. It's kind of... It is, and it's kind of a disgusting image, but it, it it brings it forward about this big, bad, ugly task. And sometimes I will actually picture a frog on my desk going, ribbit, ribbit. And, you know, this is something we just got through tax time in the U.S., so you may have issues around getting your information together for your accountant and you may not really want to do it if you're not that kind of person who enjoys doing that type of thing or you may dread calling the doctor for the test results because you're a little scared but if you have a big bad ugly task on your to-do list and you don't approach that first you say oh I'll do it after lunch by the time you get to lunch, how productive were you? Did you get stuff done? Was the Were the emails you sent out good? Was your energy up? Are people going to get the best impression of you? No. Because why? Because that frog was there staring at you and sucking all your energy. So sometimes, you know, the right thing to do is to eat that frog or to hold your nose and jump if you like that image better um, and and just do the big, bad, ugly task first. So that's two, which is gulp. Gulp is excellent. I like that. And and it's true. When when you do it first thing in the morning, you just – you just knock it out, you know, hold your breath or eat the frog in the morning. That, the whole day is so much better. I like right, the Right, because you had this energy around it, right? And you're like, yeah. ew, I feel icky. And then you're like, oh, you know, I have a headache. Am I coming down with the flu? I'm going to go take a nap. I mean, we, we all do this. I'm not just, you know, telling you terrible things about myself. We all do this. So that we get into avoidance, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So the third way to do it, and, you know, these ways are kind of determined by what's on your to-do list. We'll talk about that in a second. If you have a bunch of things that are on your to-do list, um, a bunch of little things, and you look at your list and you're like, I don't even know how that got on my list. That's not going to take very long. It's going to take a couple minutes or, you know, I could just, you know, I could probably do five of those and check them right off. Um, Maybe it's ten. You know, sometimes we, we... accrue a bunch of little things and you go check 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 and by the time you've done like the third or the fifth check how are you feeling you're feeling energized 
You're feeling like you could take on the world. You're you're feeling powerful. You're feel you've got forward momentum. So sometimes, you know, depending on what's on your list, check is the right way to do it to get yourself moving. I I just I just did that this morning. I really do feel a lot more energized. This is so wonderful. This is so wonderful. Thank you. So that's the third yeah. one. Is so that's check. third. Yeah, check. And by the way, your personality type will also play into what you like. The people who like to be in control, the chronic overachievers, will naturally gravitate to this one, to that one, to check. So the creatives will gravitate to this fourth one, which I call woohoo. And that is what gets you excited. If you don't know where to start and everything's sort of more or less the same priority, so the you know, the first two don't apply, you're like, all right, which one gets me excited? And often it'll be, you know, something like for entrepreneurs writing a blog post or maybe for you putting up show notes or starting, you know, social media promotion, because you might get some feedback. You know, if I put up a blog post and people start liking it or there's some comments and I get some positive feedback, I'm, you know, I feel good. And then I have the motivation to continue moving. So, you know, that's woohoo. And I have to confess that this is my favorite and the one that I mostly use, because the common theme for all of these, Lucy, is What's going to get you in action, in motion, feeling good, getting some energy for for accomplishing it? Because, you know, one way all the time, the human animal doesn't like routine like that. We're going to have to mix it up. And some of it's going to be dependent, you know, on what's on your to-do list. Absolutely. So just for a short, short um cut for that. The the first one is cha-ching. Fast path to the cash. Fat path to the cash. And then the second one was gulp. So gulp. you do the dreaded tack for, task first. So the, the big bad frog. Eat that frog or hold your nose and jump, whatever you like. Gulp. Just get the big bad ugly thing that you're worried about off your plate. All right. And then the third one is the check. And then the check. fourth one is woohoo. Yep. Yep, fourth is the hoo-hoo. Oh, wow. I'm really going to look at my to-do list in a completely different way this way. Now I have four choices on how I can approach them. I like that. It gives me variety. Isn't that more fun? It yeah, is. It is fun. a lot more fun. That's a lot more fun. And, and you know, really, when you have more fun with your job or with your career or your, your whatever exactly you're doing, it, it makes it so much more easier so that you can, you know, accomplish your goal for the day or, or if you're working towards a great big huge goal, it makes the transition a lot more simpler. So you have this this term that you absolutely dislike. You hate the term crazy busy. Why exactly do you hate that particular term? I am on the mission to banish crazy busy. I hate that term. <laughs> and I will tell you why. If you walk up to somebody and you start a conversation with them, you're like, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. What have you been up to? And they come back and they're like, oh, I've been crazy busy. What do you do? You, you, you can't actually roll your eyes at them because you're having a one-on-one conversation. But mm-hmm. in the back of your head, you are rolling your eyes because you can't believe they just said that. Because so what? And what are you doing? You're, you're of course, crazy busy, too. And, like, the, the way they said that is just like, well, uh, you know, I've had a lot to do. And you're thinking to yourself, well, I haven't had a lot to do. <laughs> I'm busy, too. It's just, it sets, you get into this competition where I've been crazy busy or I've been crazy busy nuts. And, and by the way, none of you have probably accomplished very much. You've just gone into this spinning overwhelm of crazy busy. I think it doesn't serve us as a terminology or as a way to think. I think it can either, one, send you into overwhelm, so you get a headache or take a nap or whatever you do when you go into overwhelm. That's not helpful. Or we could get into this con- competitive busyness thing. I, just, I think we need to reset our baseline. The baseline for 2015 
is all of us are crazy busy, so what? Tell me, if I ask you what have you been doing, just tell me what you've been working on or tell me what you just accomplished or tell me what you had for lunch. I don't care, but this crazy busy thing has got to go away because it it doesn't serve us. Oh, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, You know, when, when I do talk to people or I connect with people and they say, oh, I've been crazy busy, the first thing I want to do is turn around and say, okay, well, I'll let you get back to your busy life because you don't have time for me. And, um... It just it brings craziness into you, you know. When you just use that word "crazy," you actually start thinking of of cartoon characters with bulging eyes and and <coughs> running around without you know without any any sense of of a to do list or prioritization. And so I I will get on the bandwagon with you, and we will ban that word for 2015 and from then on. Thank you. I appreciate your support, Lucy. Absolutely. I always would love to support people. So um, we now now that we're moving beyond the crazy busy and, and starting to look more on how can we be more accountable so that what, or what, why is accountability so important for success? Yes, that is actually maybe the most important predictor of success is are you accountable to somebody else? As, you know, in your career, you know, you are accountable to your boss, you're accountable to your colleagues. Um, you, you have sort of accountability set in to some extent. You know, you have your annual reviews, and you need to have accomplished something. And, but, you know, as an entrepreneur, this accountability thing is even more important because a lot of us, or maybe it's just because I tend to work with solopreneurs or very small business owners, they, if they're not accountable to somebody else, you can give yourself the best snow job in the world as to why you couldn't get something done. You didn't have enough time, didn't have enough money, too much other stuff, some fire drill came up, um, you didn't feel like it, you had to do this other thing first. And it's very easy to get off track or not follow the path that you even want to follow if you don't have accountability. So I think the holy grail for success is to have a person or preferably several different people to be accountable for. So if you're in job search, join a job search accountability group. Or if you have, you know, a situation where you either have special needs or the money to pay for it, hire a coach to help you to set the strategy, to drop it into projects, which turn into which are tasks which get mapped to a timeline and you commit to accomplishing those tasks over a timeline or there's a million things that will come in and derail your job search. Let's talk about entrepreneurs. If you're a solo business owner, there you know kind of what you want to accomplish, but you need somebody holding you accountable. So join a mastermind group of other solo entrepreneurs or hire a coach, whatever you need, somebody to keep you accountable. I have mixed feelings about having it be your spouse. I think that that can put um, too much stress on a relationship. So depending if you're in business with your spouse, that's a different issue. Obviously, it's going to be your spouse. But mm-hmm. if you're not in business with your spouse, that's you know kind of dicey, and it varies couple by couple. In general, I don't recommend that. But join um, a group, uh, maybe through your chamber, or maybe through uh, another online entrepreneur community, or maybe somebody down the street, or your neighbor, or whatever. But find somebody to hold you accountable because you know you'll say that you want to accomplish something by next week. Stuff comes up, your kid falls off a swing set, breaks their arm, you know, whatever. Um, Things happen, but we need to be accountable to somebody else so we don't let things slide because you'll go to your accountability partner and you'll kind of, you know, be a little sheepish and say, wow, you know, I I didn't get that done this week. But you won't want to do it twice because then you'll feel like an idiot. So Mm -hmm. there's 
some statistics, which I'm going to draw a blank on right now and not be able to quote, but if you tell somebody you're going to do something, you dramatically increase the chances of doing it. And if you have accountability, it, it just it goes up astronomically, your chances of actually doing what you say you're going to do. Oh, I, I have to agree with that completely. And, you know, when when I've had a timeline and I've had accountability partners or a mastermind, I have always accomplished three times more, at least three times more, than what I would have done if I was just would have held it myself. So with that, we're going to take a small commercial break, and then we'll get back in a few moments. Experiencing a financial glass ceiling? Lucy McMonagall is a money manifester coach, and it's her passion to educate others how to manifest more money. Grab her free gift, Make Money Now, at LucyMcMonagall.com. That's L-U-C-I-M-C-M-O-N-A-G-L-E.com. Join Lucy McMonagall, host of the Wealthy Wednesday radio show, every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Listen to excellent entrepreneurs as they reveal some of the tips and tricks they use to better their personal and business lives. To listen, visit blogtalkradio.com forward slash your own university radio. The Wealthy Wednesday Radio Show. Check in with your intuition. Welcome back to the Wealthy Wednesday Radio Show. This is your host, Lucy McMonagall. And I am so grateful that you are listening today, and we have a very special guest. Her name is Catherine Morgan, and she is the a business consultant for consultants and a career transition coach through her company, Point A to Point B Transitions. If you wanted to go to her website, it is www.pointa2 Point B transitions dot com. Welcome back, Catherine. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you, Lucy. So we were we were just finishing up on the accountability and why it's so important for success. And I wanted to transition from from the accountability to, you know, we we all seem to when we're when we're spinning our wheels and we don't have somebody accountable, we don't have that energy, we tend to get burnt out from time to time. And how do you recommend professionals to get out of or to stay out of burnout? Well, there are a bunch of things that you can do. The first thing is to... Um, as you're hands-on with your calendar and scheduling all the things you have to do, schedule in time for fun. When you work for yourself and you work out of your house, it can be just an endless work, 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 work. When do you, uh, and you feel guilty when you disconnect or when, you know, you're going to miss a call or I have a, a client who's, Business is actually very successful, and he loves to play golf. And I'm like, so did you? are you playing any golf this summer? He's like, I feel guilty every time I leave the house. I'm like, I said, you know, people will wait. You know, we have this, you know, immediate, uh, we have to return their call immediately. So, you know, schedule in time when you're just not available. And this that goes for job search, too. I don't believe job search is a 24-7 thing. I think you can only do it for, you know, a finite amount of time or you lose your mind. Um, other things that you can do is make sure that you do what Julia Cameron suggests in the artist's way, which is you go and you fill the well um, for your energy. You basically recharge. And how people recharge is utterly different by person. For somebody, it's going for a walk in the woods. For somebody, it's going for a run. For somebody, it's sitting down and painting. For somebody, it's writing something. For somebody, it's going and volunteering somewhere. For it doesn't. Sometimes it's walking through a museum or walking through an antique store or you know taking the dogs out. It doesn't matter. What you know yourself well enough to know how you can recharge. And I urge you to take this recharging. Very, very seriously, because if you want to be productive, recharging is a critical component 
of being productive. Because when you're feeling a little too spent or a little too diffuse, you are not getting as much done. And you need to um, bracket your 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 stuff. So Lucy and I were talking about how if you have you know too much time to do something, it doesn't get done. Often we um, overestimate the amount of time it'll take us to do something. So so bring it down a little bit, and then you have more time for this recharging, and because you really could have gotten it done in 90 minutes, and then you have 30 minutes to do something else. Um, when my consultants are in crunch time and they're behind in a deliverable and they're freaking out, I will have them do uh, timed blocks of sitting and working hard, 45 minutes or 50 minutes. And then when the bell goes off, they do whatever they want for, you know, 10 or 15 minutes. And it, once they get into that cycle, they're hyperproductive and then they recharge. They're hyperproductive, then they recharge. And that they get back on track and they move their projects forward and they meet their deadlines and it works perfectly. Wow, that's an excellent tip. So if somebody wanted to do that by themselves, um, they would set a timer for, for 90 minutes or however long they thought it would take for a task and then they right. would take like a 10-minute break and, you know, go for a walk or do would do what they would feel would be not working something that would be relaxing to them. Is is that did I understand that correctly? Yeah, I I actually said it yes, that's one way to do it. Um I like to split up my day into you know, everybody's different is where I'm trying to go with this. So if I sound like I'm all over the map, it's just because different things work for different people. Mm-hmm. I like to get up and get right to work. And then I like to take, you know, an hour, hour and a half off in the middle of the day and go for a long walk to clear my head and I come back fresh. That's me. Other people have different ways of doing it. So the the takeaway from this is to know what recharges you and make sure that you block out the time to do it. Excellent. And how, how often should they do it? Should this be on a daily basis? Should it be on a weekly basis? Or how often should they block out the time for themselves? Well, I would think that it would be helpful to block out some daily me time. I think that's just, you know, part of being a happy human. But, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe there's um, what, once again, Julia Cameron calls an artist date where you take yourself and and do something that requires a little bit more time. So maybe once a week you have, you know, whatever whatever it is for you. If it's, you know, going and getting a mani-pedi and reading trashy magazines, I don't judge. I don't care what it is. But Mm -hmm. go and take, you know, some me time. Because when you take that time away from whatever you're doing, your job search, your kids, your business, when you come back, you're not, you don't have bad feelings towards whatever your normal work is. You're happy to be coming back instead of just sort of sitting there slogging through. Wow, that is such a wonderful nugget of information. That's so incredible. And a lot of people will really get a lot from that. Um, so the the way you, you you actually work with clients is a little different than other consultants. Um, you say that you get messy with them. It, what what exactly does that mean? I know. I like the visual of having on the kitchen gloves and and putting mm-hmm. it into the mucky water in the sink, and you're like, ew. <laughs> but uh, that that's the visual I work with. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> it That's a good visual. People. It, it is, you know. But here's the thing: it it kind of depends on where you are in your business and what mm-hmm. you need. What people tend to come to me when they've hit a wall of some kind. Their um, their business has been going on for a while, but they want to take it in a different direction, or they want to really you know, get get it on the fast track and grow it. How do they do that? Or they, they've they decided that, you know, they went and they interviewed for some jobs and going back to corporate just makes them feel queasy. They have to work for themselves. How do they do that? Or, you know, some, something's happened where they're, people are just stuck. So I think that it's an artificial distinction to separate the person from the professional. 
we're, you know, we're told to, you know, suck it up and get it done and, you know, leave your personal stuff out of your work. Well, but as a solo professional, <laughs> you are your business, right? That's you know, true. As we talked about in the beginning of the show, when you have the flu, you got to manage around that. Deadlines are going to slip or you have to reach out to people or you have to get some help or you have to reshuffle things or cancel things. I mean, or... You know, if two clients and, you know, the universe has a strange sense of humor, you, you'll you have nothing, 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 and then everything will hit at the same time, right? Yes. Yes, I, yeah. I, that, that <laughs> happens so often that. to me. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, you know, this getting messy thing is I work with both the person and the professional. And I want to be very clear, I am not a therapist, although a lot of what I do might sort of fall under that. Um, often my clients uh, are in therapy, and I have, with their permission, talked to their therapist or work, you know, kind of hand-in-hand hand with their therapist. Um, it's the person and the professional. So my background is that I've worked for a bunch of the big consulting companies, KPMG, Arthur Anderson, Deloitte, and I under, have had my own consulting business, and I've done project work for a bunch of the mid-tier firms. So I have this 360-degree view of consulting and how things work and how business strategy needs to be, and I'm a, I'm a coach, so I have this accountability thing. So I'm working with the person. I'm working with the business. We're doing some strategy. We're mapping some tasks. We're holding people accountable to do those tasks over the timeline. It's very integrated, and sometimes it's not pretty because my folks tend to be, you know, 45 to 60, and they might have health issues or they might have elder care issues with kids at home or they might have had an icky transition. People don't tend to reach out to pay me when things are going good. <laughs> I guess this is where I'm going with this. So, you know, a lot of times we'll have to just build stability, um, give them a foundation from which they can launch themselves if everything's in flux, if they're, you know, trying to put their parents in assisted living or take care of them at home or if, the, you know, a kid has special needs or if they're having some health issues or if they're having financial issues and facing for, foreclosure, you know, whatever. we got to get them stabilized because they can't even think about the stuff they need to be doing for their business or their career. So that's what I mean about the messy. Life is messy, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. in a beautiful way, sometimes in a less than beautiful way. And I work with both the person and the professional. Wow. That's that's really really a needed needed need in this Ameri in this field here. And if somebody wanted to get a hold of you, they would would they just go to your website at point A to point B? transitions or what's the best way for people to contact you yeah point a to point b transitions.com it's all spelled out i know it's long but people tend to remember it so that's a good place to start my email and my uh, phone number are on the website also if you prefer you know just to sort of connect on social media first i'm very active i am at point a underscore Point B on Twitter, and unfortunately that wasn't available on Facebook. They don't take underscores, so I'm point A period point B um, on uh, Facebook. Wow! And and you have this incredible ebook that you are giving away called Relaunch You: Discovering Your Point B and Embracing Possibilities. And could you tell us just a little bit about that and how people can get this this free copy of your ebook? Yes, you know, and actually that's a great segue after the messy thing. <laughs> because this, you know, you were asking me if there's a process that I walk people through and if there are questions that people should think about as they're going through transition, be it personal or business or career. And everything is in this ebook. It's it's short it's actionable. It has the questions in worksheet form about what you need to think about, peak situations, things you like, things that you didn't like, things you would avoid. What were the situations you love working in a small team? You like working for a big company. You like having a hands-on manager. You like having no manager. You like, you know, what 
it helps with the you are here and gets you very clear on what your best skills are, what you want to do, what you don't want to do. So um, my why is I want people to see possibility. And when people come to me in a state of confusion or depression or transition, they often can't see the possibility. We talked about not being able to see your label on your jar. Mm -hmm. This book will help them um, get, figure it out and see possibilities. So I highly recommend that you download it. I set the price to free on the page. So you just go to my website, uh, point A to point B transitions.com. You'll see the tab that says relaunch you ebook. Go there and you can download it for free. I highly, highly recommend it if you're in any kind of confusion. Wow. Wow. That is so incredible. So in addition to all of the wonderful knowledge, abilities, and value you gave us today, you are also giving this in your free ebook. That's That's so amazing, Catherine. I am so grateful. We're going to be wrapping it up just a few minutes early. And um, is there anything else you would like to to leave our listeners with? or any other information you'd like to relay onto them? Yes. I would like people to know that there are always options. Whatever situation you think that you don't have options, there always are, but you may not be able to see them. A lot of the strategy setting and path setting work we can't do ourselves. I can't do it. Lucy can't do it. Nobody can do it themselves. You need to work with somebody else, uh, a friend, a family member, uh, some kind of uh, professional association, a coach, whatever. Do you, if you are really stuck about where you want to go or what you're trying to create, do not spend more time thinking about it yourself. Get out and talk to people. Ask people how they think about you, what they think your best skills are, what they think you could do, because they will come up with ideas that you never thought of. Oh, that's a fabulous idea. And that's really, really important because a lot of times we will we will get so stuck in our own head and our own thoughts and our own limiting belief systems that, that we really can't see outside the jar. And, you know, even if we weren't able to hire a coach, talking to other people, really asking other people about, you know, what, what do they perceive our skills are helps us become more present and more in the now. That is so incredible. Thank you. Thank you, thank so you. The other thing you'll find, Lucy, is that yes. people tend to devalue things that come easily for them. So they think that just because they can do it easily means it's not valuable because they assume everybody can do it easily. That's the golden nugget. If you're looking for what to do next in your career or what you might have a business around, it's that thing that you do easily that you take for granted that other people think are hard. That I have to agree with you wholeheartedly. That is so, and that's so true. So a lot of times when when I've talked with people or I've been with people, they the things that they they just so naturally they do it. They don't even think of it as a skill or an ability or something that that they could use. And you know, having talking with the other people and and finding that out really helps you acknowledge that that particular skill or that ability or something that comes so easily and naturally to you is really something other people just struggle with. And, and it's so difficult for other people. So you can really help them with that. Um, again, if you wanted to get a hold of Catherine Morgan, her website is point A to point B transitions.com. And then you are on Twitter at point A underscore point B. And then on Facebook, you are point A period point B. Is that correct? Yes, it is. All right. Fabulous. Well, thank you for listening to the Wealthy Wednesday radio show. And I'd like to thank you, Catherine, for being on our show today. 
And please, if you're listening, go to her website and pick up her Relaunch You, Discovering Your Point B and Embracing Possibilities free book. Until next time, many blessings. Thanks for listening to the Wealthy Wednesday Radio Show with Lucy McMonagall every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Join us next time for more in the way of expert interviews with excellent guests and entrepreneurship and business tips that'll help you better your personal and business life. For excellent resources and to personally contact Lucy McMonagall, visit LucyMcMonagall.com. Until next time, so long, everybody.